Eastern Han started in the hand of Liu Xiu, like his distantly related ancestor Liu Bang. Liu Xiu was also merciful. He pardoned the red eyebrows, including their leaders and the young puppet emperor. He spent the next decade defeating all the other self-stylized emperors until he was the only one left. During his 32-year-long reign, Guangwu Di, the title Liu Xiu was given after his decease. Enacted modest but significant land reforms, improving the quality of life of the rural peasants. He also re-emphasized the importance of standardized civil service examinations and promoted education, establishing over a hundred state institutes. For training candidates of ability at government expenses, for the majority of the first and second centuries, the Han Empire experienced a second golden age, where the empire is militarily successful and the economy boomed, land expanded. The eastern half of the Silk Road trade route, linking Rome to China via the Kushan and Parthian empires, was patrolled regularly, which protected and promoted trade, which was also facilitated by the Han invention of paper. Cheap mass-produced paper also facilitated the power and the growth of the. Bureaucracy. Slowly over time, the civil servant class exerted increased power over the emperor and nobility. By the latter half of the second century, emperors were installed and removed at will, with the youngest and the most manipulatable being favored for the job. In earlier times, the periodic plagues, floods, droughts, and famines that afflicted the peasant farming class were dealt with effectively by Eastern Han Dynasty emperors. They granted tax amnesty, grain relief, and the right to fish and hunt on royal lands to peasants during times of crisis. Which ultimately prevented civil war. However, during the one hundred and eighties, this was not the case. When famine struck, peasants had their taxes raised, land seized, and wages cut. Consequently, this led to the mass rebellion of the poor. Many of them, military veterans. To defeat the yellow turban rebels, as they were called, the bloated, insufficient bureaucracy turned to the nobility and granted them unprecedented levels of autonomy. These nobles became independent warlords, ruling over their own sovereign domains, most subservient to the emperor only in name. It took more than twenty years for these warlords to defeat the yellow turban rebels. The warlord Cao Cao granted many of the land reforms requested by the remaining rebels, who then joined his cause. These warlords continued to wage war on each other, vying for supremacy. Long after the yellow turban rebellions had ended. Their small warring states merged into three larger kingdoms, and in two hundred and twenty, the last Han puppet emperor was dethroned and granted the title Duke of Shenyang, where he was sent and lived out the rest of his life in comfort. Han ruled China for over four hundred years. 
during this long period of stability and wealth, or golden age, people had time to be creative, and come up with new inventions and discoveries that improved people's lives. For example, the Han Dynasty excelled at warfare and expanded their empire. All men served two years in the army, and advances in ironwork, improved armor, and made longer, better swords. They invented the crossbow and used kites. Yes, kites, to measure distances, send messages, and scare enemies. The new and improved Han government. Used the centralized government of the Qing system, but added Confucius ideas of leading by example and a moral, honest government. The Han setup of bureaucracy. It's a pyramid-shaped government with a few at the top and many at the bottom. Each level directs the people below them. The best thing. The Han did was make their officials earn their jobs by taking a civil service examination. This ensured qualified people ran the government. Several farming inventions developed under the Han rulers. The chain pump moved water from low irrigation ditches and canals up to the fields. They made iron plows and the wheelbarrow, simple inventions that made farming easier. The, in the industry, the Han invented a foot-powered machine that wound silk fibers onto a large rail. Silk was the number one trade export of China, and the faster they could make it, the better. Under the Han. The Chinese learned how to mine salt from underground. They invented iron-tipped bamboo drills that reached its deepest, one thousand feet. They used the bamboo to bring the salt water up, boil off the water, and use the salt to preserve their meat and vegetables. You can thank the Han for inventing paper, which I already mentioned earlier. And also the arts of calligraphy. Before paper, they wrote on silk, very expensive. Paper was way cheap, so people could afford to write, and it made great books. New medical practices started under the Han Dynasty. The Chinese believe that illnesses were caused when the Yin and the Yang forces. Of the body were out of balance, healers had to restore the balance. They used acupuncture or needles for curing illnesses like headaches. Another medical technique is moxibustion, where powdered moxa is placed on skin and lit on fire. The heat reduces pain and diseases like、um, arthritis. Michael Phelps used it before swimming in the Olympics. They also used wine as an anesthetic to take away pain. The Chinese knew how the human body worked. They used the heartbeat and pulse to judge a person's health. Just like your doctors do, they also knew that blood circulates from the heart and back again. The Han Dynasty rocked the science world. Their astronomers recorded comets, solar eclipses, and discovered that the moon shines by reflecting the sun's light. They invented the seismograph. To detect the direction of earthquakes and magnetic compasses, with a lodestone to tell direction. So 
Remember the Han Dynasty and all of their amazing inventions and ideas that changed your world.